Okay, so I already write in here. Okay, so <clears throat> so Kafka, these are the delivery semantics and broker and Kafka server has topic. The topic is basically a category of messages, a category of messages. The messages will be stored, a category of messages where messages will be stored. Okay, so every topic is different, different topics will be there and each topic will be storing its own message, right? Whatever. So produce, sir, when you see the last time the command line code terminal, so their producer is sending the broker address, server address and topic, which topic and which broker, okay? Because one broker has multiple topics are there. So it has to designate like which topic it has to send the message, okay? Sending message, okay? And uh, consumer also when consuming message, so it has to also tell broker address and topic, which topic it has to pull the message. Okay, pulling messages. Okay, and there is a consumer group, right? In the consumer, consumer where the consumers are there. So there is a concept of consumer group. Consumer group is basically collection of consumer. Consumer group is so set of consumer. A set of consumer. Consumer can read masses parallelly. Can read masses parallelly, parallel from Kafka topic partitions, okay. So purpose of uh, uh, partition is, first of all, it's providing a parallelism. So topic is uh, is basically the partition, so partition is, partition is the topic is divided into the different partitions. The topic is divided, divided into the partitions so that uh, consumer in consumer group can read masses parallel okay so this is a some small small the theory concept okay when the kafka we are implementing the kafka up now question comes like kafka the is like uh, why we need the kafka because kafka is uh, um, handling the throughput of the messages. Suppose your data is a streaming data. Generally, Kafka is used for streaming data only. Kafka used for streaming data. Uh, this streaming data from where it is coming. So if I say some example, okay, some REST services. So REST services is consuming masses continuously, continuously, continuously from a streaming source. Okay, so like uh, I can say the some example of live cricket matches, right? So this kind of live cricket match uh, or some where is something is streaming is happening. Okay, or I can say some um, like uh, Twitter is uh, like social media, Twitter, right? So messages are continuously there, right? Coming, right? Hashtags, so Twitter messages. Okay. So so like we have to write a producer class. So generally the terminal, right? We tried last time terminal. So terminal is just for testing. So terminal, right? We write one one server, Jukeeper we start first. So Jukeeper is placing a role of, keeping a role of coordination service for high availability of the Kafka broker. So one terminal we start Jukeeper, another terminal we start server, Kafka server. Kafka server and then another terminal we start for Kafka producer. Okay. But before that, we have to create one Kafka topic and producer send messages. Producer is sending messages, send messages, sending messages, sending messages. And the another terminal, Kafka consumer is receiving. So this is just for testing, like our uh, our producer and consumers are working fine. So testing for producer and consumers, consumer are receiving messages, okay? So if your broker is not running or like Jukeeper has some problem, right? Suppose Jukeeper is stopped. So, so this coordination will not happen, right? Okay, 
but this is for testing testing for purpose but the when we go for programmatic approach the programmatic is like uh, i have started the producer and consumer program so i have uh, suppose i have a uh, two programs so one producer class right written in python api python code and it's is running right is running and uh, same time at the same time our consumer our consumer python program is running our consumer python program is running okay so the producer is producer is receiving messages from rest api receiving messages like receiving messages from rest api and writing to top cut off okay so when both are running continuously so our messages will be delivered to the kafka topic and consumers will be receiving messages and the consumer program consumer program will receive messages then we can do any further system can read the message further system can read messages from consumer okay so this is a one thing but this consumer we can change to the consumer to like we can change consumer this kafka consumer class consumer class change to spark uh, apis spark api consumer okay so spark api consumer we can do analytics also so here kafka we this consumer class we are not doing any transformation things just we are uh, writing into some file or we can do something but here in the spark we are doing so spark api consumer if you make it this consumer is a spark consumer like pi spark consumer class so pi spark pi spark consumer api class pi spark api consumer class so this will be not only receive the messages it is not only receiving receiving messages it is doing up it is applying the transformation it is we know right uh, uh, data frame we can do so we will be getting the data as a data frame so here it is not only receiving message it is applying transformation on received on received data frame from kafka and then further further this spark consumer class can write data to some target data store some target data store and this target data store could be any like database or file system right no sql sql we already done but now it's a little different because previously we have written the data in the no sql sql as a data frame dot write but now we will be writing we will be writing same data frame we will be writing data frame within streaming sequence of the data frame sequence of the data frame so now in the streaming case it will be coming a sequence of data frame so so it is we have to run for each batch for each batch for every batch of the data frame sequence of data frame we have to write the data frame inside that we have to write data frame write data frame to to so some data store okay similar way just we have to use some for each batch okay because here data is not one time right okay because in the batch processing you seen the data you are writing one time batch right you have prepared the data frame and entire data frame you have written in the database or any sql no sql or files okay but now here is so data is continuously coming from the source and you are transforming the data and then you are writing the data but this all is a data frame only so i will tell about now in spark streaming that will come into spark streaming and there are two types of streaming there one is uh, discrete streaming okay discrete streaming and this is called um, sequence of rdd 
frequency of RDD. And the second one is called structured streaming. Structure, structured streaming. And this is called sequence of data plane. So when we are using this, mostly we use this structured streaming because there are other benefit of the structured streaming because it is easy to manage because data frame, we can easily manage the transformation rather than in the RDD. So that is the reason we use the structured streaming. Okay. <clears throat> so follow this one, you will understand more better way. So this is like a different uh, producers, that there are different applications are there, like producer applications. I can say one application is reading data from the rest. Some application is reading data from some DBs also it can read, right? Some are reading data from the files. So files also we can read as a streaming, but that files streaming is like our one particular folder, the files is keep coming. So one batch is their files, that batch is so already the files are there in your folder and you are reading all the files as a batch data but streaming files means that your data is coming as a continuous files are coming right you are keep adding the files so your data is being that okay so there are the different uh, producers are there and the consumers applications are there and in between there is a kafka cluster this is a kafka server okay and uh, some connectors so there is a Kafka is also having its own one module, Kafka Connect APIs, and one Kafka Stream API, right? Kafka Stream is same like a Spark streaming, okay? But we will not get those benefits of the Spark in memory computation, but streaming also is faster, this Kafka streaming, okay? So when you don't want to use the Spark, then we go for this stream processing APIs or sometimes you want to connect directly with the Kafka, with the DBs, right? Like you want to, ETS, you want to write uh, in the Kafka, you want to write ETS. So Kafka has not only one, two modules, Kafka has, uh, there are other different modules out there. So when you Kafka documentation, you go. So when you go to the Kafka documentation, so here you will see, <clears throat> Kafka Connect. So Kafka Connect uh, is a connector API. It is a REST-based API, right? Uh, so one is a producer-consumer API is there, producer API, consumer API. So these two APIs we use for sending the message and receiving messages. Another one is a stream API. A stream API is a Kafka, it's on streaming, right? On streaming. So you can go through here, right? It's on streaming module and uh, we can write uh, our own streaming application code we can write like our own transformations like map flat map filters but it's not uh, like in memory computation but it's uh, providing its own kafka stream builder apis so there is a k stream k table right so you can write this code in java python scala so language you can use anything okay so like language like any word count demo so you can see this kind of codes can be written this is a java code is written okay so kafka stream it is on streaming api so <clears throat> so when we are talking about the streaming api so streaming uh, is faster right because it's a uh, continuous data is coming so there are the different threading models are there so another one is a uh, kafka having its uh, Kafka Connect API. So what this Kafka Connect? Kafka Connect is the API for reading and writing data from the data sources. This is used for the ETLs. 
right so one ETS we are going to write in spark okay so spark is providing its own ETL but uh, when we want to do ETS using Kafka so we use uh, Kafka connect API so Kafka connect uh, Kafka connect API is providing the connector API so different uh, connector modules are there like we have uh, different different connector like okay MySQL connector is there SQL database connector or file system connector so there are the different different connectors are there so if I want to read the file from the source and write the file to the target or if I want to read the data from MySQL and write the data to NoSQL so this kind of connectors we can use the directly some connectors so these are the connectors provided by the Kafka but uh, we use some confluent because confluent is providing more connectors right because confluent because vanilla Kafka when I talk the vanilla Kafka is the Kafka is original Kafka right Kafka is provided but confluent Kafka is the Kafka wrapper is there on top of the Kafka original Kafka right we get this Kafka this is a vanilla Kafka so this Kafka has not all types of different different uh, um, like connectors okay but when we go here in confluent kafka so confluent kafka is wrapper it's a distribution you can think about it distribution and it has more number of connectors are there for different different uh, source and target so okay so so kafka confluent is uh, providing all types of features of the kafka so whatever you can do in the vanilla so everything is here because it is uh, providing everything right so <clears throat> okay so here so first we need to see the producer consumer code okay so how to write a kafka producer code so very simple kafka producer code so we are going to write uh, messages to the Kafka topic, right? So like we are defining some Kafka producer class. So here is a Kafka producer class. So I'm using form Kafka import Kafka producer and Kafka producer class. So we have to provide the Kafka server. This is by default port 9092 and uh, CLizer. So we are sending the, when we are sending the message, there we are specifying the topic. So if you see somewhere topic, right? Send method. Mm, yeah, producer dot send. So produce producer dot send, and this is the topic. So this particular topic, it is sending the, it is sending the messages. So these messages are coming. So it is running in the for loop. Okay, so this is a little complex code. So let me show you some easy one. And same thing like you are doing the Kafka consumer. So two two different code you are running one code is kafka producer and one code is so this code is writing data to postgres so it is making a connection with the this is a normal python code just you are making a connection with the with the postgres db and what you want to do whatever messages you are getting you are reading the data from the this particular same topic and uh, once you get the this data right consumer consumer dot um consumer you can read the messages masses in consumer so once you get the masses and this masses you are writing to the db you are writing in insert into table so what exactly you are doing here you are getting the messages and these messages you are writing to the postgres database as a insert queries you are inserting the messages so some table is there raw data table and entire raw raw is uh, like your message you are writing to the the raw is a column name there you are writing this masses percentage as this okay so this is the string json message you are writing into the table so this is this is the json masses format okay so similar type of code we have to write but for this our producer and our uh, Kafka server and Jukeeper uh, should be running because if the Jukeeper or Kafka server is not running, we cannot start. We cannot run the producer consumer. So here, hmm. 
Okay, so here is uh, how to start the Zookeeper. Okay, so. Okay, so here I will start the first Zookeeper. Okay, second tab, I will start server, FS server. So there is a new thing is there, na? craft. This is like without Zookeeper. Kafka can be run without Zookeeper, right? That is also in the newer version is coming, okay? Because it is managing the cluster, okay? But for this, we are we are using Zookeeper. That is the reason we are not going to use this. Another way is Docker image also, right? We can do. So uh, we will see in the, the containers, right? When we will go through the Docker Kubernetes. So there we will see how we can run the, as a Kafka, we will pull the image from the official repository. And then we can run the Docker image. So this will become a container. And once it will become container, then we can we can uh, do the same thing. So it is very lightweight, right? And it can be pulled anywhere, this image. We don't need to download and we have to extract the JIP and then we have to. So this all these things we have to do, but, but the installation we will not do the manual way. Okay, download and all those things. Okay, so here, I'm just, uh, if I'm just checking like my topic is created or not. So I'm running, I'm checking here topic is there, then it will be saying topic is there. Otherwise it will create a topic. So topic is created. Now for the same topic, okay, I'm going to send the message. So I'll be right now. I will not run this code because I will be writing uh, my own Kafka Python API code, producer code, okay. Last one will be there, my last one. Kafka producer code. So we need to install one connector. Let me show you. So, <clears throat> so install first Python Kafka connector using the pip command because you are using on the um like a kafka to connect with python with the kafka so we need to install this so in my case already i have installed it so so it will be saying that Find a version that is where you can Python Kafka from the version. I think. Okay. 
Okay, my topic name is Quick Start Event. Quick Start. Okay, so this message is sent. Okay, so <clears throat> but it is stored in the topic because I give in the topic, right? So you can run the consumer and then you can see the message or command line consumer you can see or programmatic consumer. So two options are there. Suppose you want to see command line consumer to see. So this is the command line console console producer console consumer this console consumer and you have to tell the same topic so when you telling here the same topic so any combination you can do right programmatic producer you can write or command line consumer you can see okay so here you are sending right so if this command you are sending again so another new message you can send okay so So, so this is this is a programmatic producer, but command line consumer. But I can write programmatic consumer also. This is a command line consumer. Okay, so this is a simple code where you are using the producer APIs, Kafka producer APIs, and you are telling here this is a bootstrap server and the producer dot send. You are sending the messages. If you are going to receive the messages. So consumer, you can write like same for the, you can write the consumer. Okay. So you can run with the Python command or you can run the separate one more Python shell. So you can run another Python terminal. Well, you mean like uh, you can start Python or you can use uh, Python 3 command. Okay. So either you create a py file and run it, or you can start the Python shell and then paste it command. The formatting is a problem. So go to step server. And here also we change the topic. So Java also we can write the same code, but we have to use some Java program, right? We have to write a, some project. We have to write a Java class because Python, we can run it directly on the, because it's a scripting language. But when you are writing Java or Scala, you have to write, uh, write uh, you have to compile code and then you have to create a class. So everything, these all things done in the some project, right? You have to create a project, you have to create a jar or uh, you can run the, through the jar, you can do. Okay, so. Okay. So once a consumer object, you get it. This is a Kafka consumer class and uh, some group ID we have to give, okay? So, and uh, it is reading the messages. Okay, this consumer is a consumer group ID. Okay, and this is a server. And then now once you get the message, this consumer object, so you are iterating all the messages in consumer. Consumer is collection of messages. So you are retrieving all the messages. Okay, I think this print statement is a problem. So we have to, okay, so 
you have to run this. I think it's some. You know, getting the message. So this is this is holding, right? This is not ending, right? This is because consumer will be keep receiving the message, right? Because producer is not continuously sending message, but but consumer is receiving message continuously. That's the reason it is holding. Okay. Because this producer is just call one time send function. But if you run in the loop, then you can send continuous message, right? You can send 100 messages, 1000 messages. So this producer will keep running. And then same time the consumer. So here also you will see the message is coming if you are reading through the command line. Okay. So this is a simple producer consumer. Suppose you have a message of the JSON is there. So JSON message, right? You can write the JSON message type, try this one. And uh, you have another consumer class which is reading the JSON message. Okay. So <clears throat> it will be same thing I have written in the file. So this this producer consumer API is code. You try that one. Okay. So next is So when we are starting the Kafka streaming, okay, Spark streaming. So Spark streaming. So I was talking about there are two types of streamings are there, okay. One is a D stream, another one is a structured streaming. Second one is a structured streaming. So D stream is sequence of RDD. So first of all. Like when we are talking about the Kafka is a major role in the streaming, right? But we can directly read the data without Kafka also, right? Suppose I'm reading the data from Hadoop file system, right? Continuous data is coming. So that could be a one source and Kinesis, right? It's a AWS Kinesis services there. Twitter is a one streaming source that is a social media. Flume is also one source. So these are the other sources than the kafka okay and uh, what streaming is doing it is consumer okay so these are the producer for the streaming data and the spark streaming is a consumer so when i say the data so data is coming in the batches right because one batch the like data is coming in the batches so we are receiving data in a some interval some time interval we are getting so there is a one batch window and one is sliding window so what is batch window and what is the sliding window? So batch window, we call it batch window, right? Okay, if I say every 10 second, my one one batch is coming, okay? So every 10 second, I'm getting 100 messages batch, 100 messages batch, okay? Suppose I'm reading a file of uh, 100 messages, like one one file I'm reading. So every 10, 10 second, one, one file is arriving and one file is having the hundred messages. Okay. And what is sliding window? Sliding window is like 30 second is my sliding window. So I'm saying like three batches will be covered. Okay. So 30 second means uh, three batches of sliding. Okay. So like uh, we are saying like, okay, our streaming data is coming and each batch is a 10 second, but sliding window is 30 second and three batches in each sliding window okay so when we are writing a spark streaming code so when we are writing a spark streaming code so spark streaming code we have to just check right uh, what is our batch interval we are defining okay our batch interval is this is a batch interval data again. so one second batch is defined here so i can read the data from the socket also 
So telnet, you know, right, we have seen in the flume, right? We can send the messages from some telnet, right? NC, LK. So this telnet, this will start any one, um, like um, it will start the one network, right? It will start uh, the telnet, which is sending messages and receive messages are received by the, the Spark consumer, okay? So we, right now we are not talking about the Kafka here because this is a socket connection. So socket connection like TCP socket, which is uh, sending the messages, okay? And uh, our Spark consumer program is receiving from the same port, okay? So if I'm giving the port 9999 and the same port, my telnet is sending the messages. So I will receive the messages. So how to start my telnet? Okay, so I stop this. So if I want to start this one, so my, I'm sending the some messages. So who is receiving this message? I mean, right now, nobody is receiving message, right? Because this is a socket. We are sending the message through socket, but no consumer is there. So we should have the consumer, right? We should have the consumer. So how to write a consumer code? So this is some typical consumer code, right? Three languages there, Python, Scala, and Java. So we need, a, and this is the RDD, D, D stream. This is the discrete stream code. This is not a structured streaming. And one thing is in the discrete stream is, like if I'm reading the data from the socket, the method name is a socket text stream. If I'm writing a data from file, the file text stream is there. If I'm writing, reading a data from Kafka, so Kafka util dot um, create a stream function is there, okay? But when I'm using a structured streaming, only single function is there, but we have to provide a format. So you remember, right, uh, when you are reading a data in the batches, right, batch stream. So you provide just like this, spark dot read dot format. And then you say your format is a JDPC or your, if you are reading the data from the SQL DB, or if you are reading a data from like a CSV file, so you are giving in the bracket, you are giving CSV file, right? Okay, and there is a load function is there. So there is a load function. So there is a load function is there, and this load function is loading the data from different, different file format. So structured streaming also for the same thing, okay? But instead of the here, here is a read stream function is there. Instead of in the read, there is a read stream and dot format. So when I'm reading data from the socket, I will write socket. I will write socket. If I'm reading the data from Kafka, so I will say Kafka, okay? And then I will provide the Kafka parameters I will provide. That way we will do, okay? So I will show that, okay? First is, uh, this is the RDD, okay? So, so RDD, this is the PySpark uh, streaming API, okay? So, this one is uh, so I need to start the PySpark shell. And I will be defining my import statement, right? Because I'm using this import statement. So this is uh, so Spark context, right? Uh, uh, then I'm using the, okay, this is the error is coming. Now from the multiple spark context, existing spark context.
So we cannot run the it is saying three point three point four. Okay, I think. Okay, maybe that session is not closed. That's the reason it's giving issue. Okay, so I'm getting here the I'm getting the lines here. So I'm I'm trying to read now the lines from my socket. So I already sent the message. So I will be going to read the line. So this is the RDD. Okay, so this is the RDD. So lines I'm getting the RDD. So I can do some transformations. Like I'm doing a word count here. So I'm doing flat map. You already know this code, right? We are doing um, by the space, right? We are converting lines into the word, right? We are getting the words. So, but you, if you try here, words.collect, because it's a streaming code, so it will not allow here collect, okay? So you have to, you have to start uh, this uh, await for termination, that when you streaming start, then it will start the performing your transformation things okay so you cannot do any any result you can't see till your start will not happen okay so right now i have done till word okay so if i want to see only till word i can start the streaming and then i can see but i want to do the complete word count so i will run these two lines Okay, now I will start the my streaming. So this start and await termination means it will wait till the manually you have to terminate. Otherwise it will keep running, okay? So now your, see whatever message you send, the messages keep coming. So now there is no batch, right? There is no data. Now I will send uh, my next, uh, I will send same sentence I'm writing so that I can check the word count. Okay. Now you see here, this is taking one, 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 because this is the after starting now. Okay. So now it will become, it is not ending. Is every time doing one. is not doing the word count. So let me stop and start again.
is getting the same port. Okay, so this one coming, hello, come on. This thing.
Okay, let me check this one, but it will run. Okay, initially message is coming. Okay, so try this one. Um, at least one example you try, socket one. Tomorrow I will show with the Kafka. Okay. Okay, thank you.